All right, how's it going guys? Today we're doing the Beyond the Process video. And the last few times we've been doing uh, more science-based with our chemist, Chris Gauhar. And today what I wanted to do is open a discussion with some professional detailers here. And we have Kerwin who owns Aloha Detailing. Uh, he travels around the whole world pretty much doing detailing. We have Johnny, who's a local detailer here in Boulder. And then we all know Adam. So um, what I want to ask you guys is just your experience with coming up in detailing, mainly this is directed at Adam and Kerwin, but starting off in detailing your experiences when, when you first started and kind of got your, got, got going with it. Um, it was a, it was a different, different world for sure. You know, um, wasn't a whole lot of ceramic coatings and you know, whatnot going on. There was a, there was some polishing, not, not on the level that polishing is at now or paint correction. More of the detailing was just cleaning people's cars, cleaning, washing, vacuuming, shampooing, putting a wax on. It wasn't so fine tuned as how it is now. How about you, Adam? What, what was it like for you when you starting out and I mean, you were young, so you're in Dana Point, right? I was, and things were very different also. Uh, I did a lot of car washing and waxing, and that was it. You know, this was before clay happened. People weren't feeling finishes, looking for bumps. That wasn't even a, a thought. So car washing and, and minor detailing when I started off was all about making sure there was no streaks on the glass, the wheels were cleaned all the way, but the wheels were so small then, there was no cleaning the back of the wheels. You know, there was no back of the wheels, period. You couldn't even reach your hand through it because they were so, so small. So things have really changed a lot. And as vehicles have changed, technology has changed, detailing has changed a lot with, you know, the biggest, the biggest invention in detailing. I'll give you three. One, microfiber towels. That's a huge one. I mean, I was using diapers. We used cloth diapers. We started selling cloth diapers right when I started. Clay, ceramics. You know, those are the things that changed it. Now, to some lesser degree, orbital polishers, people took an orbital sander and started using it as a polisher. And before that, it was just using a rotary buffer and you know, everyone and their mom repainted some part of their car after using that, so. Well, and now it's, what, totally different for you, right? Like you're coming up in a world of all these new technologies that he just listed off. What, what's your experience with it? To me, it seems like there's a product for every single part of the car now, the engine, the wheels, the windows, the paint, and it can get a little confusing and I'm sure it's way different if you started using, let's say three products, you had one for the outside, one for the inside, and one for the wheels. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely there's a lot to learn, I guess, and getting into it now, um, I think it's a lot different than if I had been doing it for 20 plus years. I think the cool thing about the industry now is there's a lot of resources, you know? Like, when you guys started out, it was, you know, either getting mentored by somebody or figuring it out on your own, but it's not like you could go on YouTube and say, yeah, there was no internet. Yeah. You know, I didn't start at a time with the internet. It was just try stuff and go, wow, that really didn't work at all. Well, let's try that again. Whoa, look at that. That's terrible. Let's yeah. try something else. The resources is the biggest, the biggest thing for everyone now. I mean, like you, you can, you can start off and grow so quickly just with the fact that you can Google something or go on a forum or a Facebook page or you know um, a YouTube video. Like right now I'm reading this book by Malcolm Gladwell. It's called Outliers. 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So you get 10,000 hours into anything. Let's say you're a chemist and you're amazing at chemistry. Until you have 10,000 hours into chemistry in your field, you're still on your way. You're, you're, you're becoming the expert that you will one day be. And I think that you get a chance to learn quite a bit through the sure process of screwing up. Yeah, yeah. I think the average detailer might be in, in business for maybe six months. You know, a lot of people come and go in this industry. So there's this ever developing cycle and detailers are coming into the market and getting out of the market really quickly. And you know, you're armed with, um, uh, you know, a couple hundred hours of YouTube videos, you can become knowledgeable enough to do some work and, and get paid for it, but that still doesn't supplant 10,000 hours of detailing. You know, 10,000 hours is a lot of time. You're like, what, detailing for 10,000 hours? I don't wanna do that, I'm not gonna become a detailer. Well, maybe it's not 10,000 hours to become a successful detailer, but to become a true professional, you, you really need to put in your time, make the mistakes, see what worked, see what didn't, and then you come out on the other side the, you know, you're, you're really the authority. Yeah. That was something I wanted to touch on was, you know, 
like you're saying, it's an ever evolving door of people getting into the industry and getting out. But to me, it's like you either need to progress with the industry, which that's what Kerwin's doing, mm -hmm. or you go and you create a product line that you can then sell to to professionals. Right. You, you can be stuck in like old techniques and old ways and that's okay. But if you want to be efficient, you want to be fast, you want to be profitable, um, and yet you want to you wanna appeal to the people that's like going after the latest, greatest product. Um, you you got to be up there and you know, the machines are changing, the pads are changing, um, compounds are changing, ceramics are changing. You also got to be able to like find your roots. Like I found my roots in like going back to using a rotary a little bit, going back to using really great carnubas. Um, you know, everyone thinks that just because what they see on social media and what they see everywhere, that it's only got to be this. But that's not the truth. There's certain products, like a sealant will work on a certain color paint better. And a wax is going to work great on a, like a single stage, solid color, that's a show car. It's kind of like knowing your roots and knowing like what to put in at what slot at what given time for a certain price point. That's, that's the key. Yeah. Well, and then you're doing like big jobs, like you're the head de detailer for our Bear Jackson one of the things that I think about that, about the Barrett Jackson deal and how many hours of detailing we get, yeah. we're bringing a new product out, what do we do? We send it to Barrett and then we can now do thousands of hours, because we're doing hundreds of cars, right. you know, hundreds and hundreds of cars at Barrett Jackson. There's some cool cars and uh, this tent, I mean, all of the tents got cool cars. Yeah, and you know, you're doing a lot of customs which don't have any consistency in their clear coats, their base coats, I mean, there's really all over, over the map. But that's when you get a chance to see how a product works you know, we totally, we, from when we started three years ago, all we've done is basically waterless washes, you know, and a lot of people get surprised in how we get through so many cars with that. And it's, just, it's such a lifesaver and it's such an incredible tool that so many people are afraid to use. That's the only way we could get through so many cars. There's no way we could, we could wash the cars, blow the water out, dry the cars and, and do what we're doing. And especially a lot of the locations, we, we don't have the ability to wash anyway you know, because of EPA and whatnot. A lot of guys, even the newer guys, won't do waterless. They're like, w we got to do a foaming and a wash. And yeah, that's great, you know, but the waterless is such a great tool. And it's one of those fine examples of growing with the times. So from the very beginning, I always kind of told myself if, if I wasn't detailing at the highest level, I would try to bridge the gap by providing some sort of value, um, whether it's on the customer service side or what have you. And so I started by going to Home Depot and just getting a bucket of every single product on the shelf, kind of just doing this. And uh, I would go and I'd detail, and it wasn't until I was detailing at um, somebody that lives in Louisville's house, actually. Um, and they're like, why are you using that crap? Like, here's this. And they brought out a cart with a bunch of Adam stuff. And I used it on his car and I was like, I don't know what I was doing before. And um, the reason I, I think it's important to care about the products you're using is they help you bridge the gap between um, you know customer service and the finished product and the expectations that you set for the customer um, and so still I say to customers I'll say hey I, if I missed anything please tell me I'm always trying to get better at this I shouldn't have but if I did it's important that um, I guess you not only learn from those but set those expectations at the beginning um, just so that you know, you always end up with a happier customer. Yeah. I could always hire somebody to do just the manual labor, but it's hard to find people that care as much and have that kind of people skills when talking to a customer yeah. or a client. Yeah, you can go in and miss a bunch of stuff, and I've done it, and because nobody's perfect, I've missed stuff, blatantly miss something that someone could totally say, you're terrible. But because of the relationship, it always can mend that. Like, hey, you know what, no big deal. Next time you come back, you can fix it. How you handle it is critical. You know, you say, okay, I'm gonna paint your truck. Yeah. And, or I'm gonna, you know, I burned a panel or something. Like I was trying to get a scratch, it was close, too close to an edge and I, <clears throat> and I'm so sorry that I'm gonna make it right. I haven't had to repaint any cars, mm -hmm. but um, I've definitely had to say sorry and turn my car around and come right back to the client's house. And um, with any business, part of the reason I'm so interested in this specific business is it is so person oriented to where the relationship that, that you have with the person almost means more than the detail in a lot of senses. Rapport and the relationship. That's the majority of what my time is spent doing. Talking about fishing, biking, hiking. And that's where they're like, yeah, so what? He didn't vacuum the passenger side. Yeah. So what? 
he'll fix it next time. Or they'll call you and be like, damn, you're a terrible. Next time you gotta stop talking to me so much. And it's cool. What for you was like the turning point when you were like, instead of detailing, I wanna sell product. It was an accidental thing for us. You know, you gotta realize that our business was not formed intentionally. I was a very unintentional business. I mean, I started detailing. I used products that I liked all the way through. However, when we started to detail for Coca-Cola and we got all these trucks and I was trying to ox trying to cut oxidation and polish them at the same time, well, that's how it started. It started just because, you know, necessity. yeah, necessity. We totally needed it, you know? And then Simple Green wouldn't really cut fifth wheel grease. Fifth wheel grease is like the stuff, you know, your trailer goes on a fifth wheel of a, of a 18 wheeler. That grease is nasty. It splatters all up over the back of the truck, you know, and we had to acid wash the wheels. So that then, okay, now Simple Green wasn't quite strong enough. Now we needed a super industrial strength thing. So then coming out with a compound that made sense, coming out with a cleaner that was really heavy duty. Every single Coke truck, I swear, rubbed on every curb that it drove within, within 100 miles of it, they just rubbed the curbs. So there's no lettering on any tires on the right side of every Coke truck, you know, <clears throat> and it just ripped the, ripped the lettering off of it, scuffed him up, and, and the guy who was the fleet manager wanted the tires shiny on his trucks. But, you know, normal tire shine would not shine that. It was just, they, they were just so roasted. The tires were like just so ripped, and, they, and they're retreads, right? So they'll like, they'll use that same sidewall with five different sets of, of retreads. So I mean, they're just, they're wasted. But, so we had to make a, you know, a super high silicone tire shine that would <clears throat> do that. So our, our business was really based on trying to fix problems, but then other products became needed. And we, as we were de detailing these Coke trucks at the same time we were detailing, uh, that we were selling at the swap meet, we just started saying, oh, this product that we're using is kind of good. You know, it actually works really good. And, and we could probably sell that. So boom, let's try. So we tried and, and, and one product at a time, we just started throwing them in line. And then the real thing was Coca-Cola said, thanks, but no thanks and their union decided that they could in-house do all this detailing and they didn't need us anymore. That was when I took detailing, I mean, I took selling products very seriously because I lost our major, our major customer. We did some detailing for UPS. They would drive by oh, lots of trees, so lots of scratches, and they were, they were driving through this wash tunnel that just used hard water, so, and they never dried them, so all, you could, couldn't even see out the glass, the water spots were crazy. So we were buffing out the scratches and uh, acid washing and polishing the glass to pull off the water spots. Those many hours detailing that helped us develop products. We did 10 trucks a night, every night, you know? Sometimes 11, sometimes nine. But we did 10 trucks a night every night. We got so many hours of detailing, you know? The shift went from detailing to, to products because of that, because of that mix, and because we were able to use stuff and kind of tweak stuff and make stuff. I just made mistakes really fast, and a lot of them. I would probably see my ultimate goal as I guess conquering like the skills that it would take to be successful in any business. Um, if it's not necessarily detailing, that's okay. If they're self-driving cars in 10 years and they get shot through a, a cleaner and you don't need the use of a real person anymore, that's okay. I just think that um, it's important that I hone in the skills that I can take anywhere else with me. Um, whether that be detailing, I love detailing, but who knows if that will be, I guess, the, the Johnny, final one. Johnny came to the, to the uh, airport my wife and I and all of our kids, we were, were on vacation for a week. We knew we drove a dirty ass car to the airport and uh, we had to get it clean. I have him go to the valet at the uh, Westland Hotel at Denver Airport, where I always park. Johnny, go, if you, if you can, if you got time, please go take care of this car for my wife. It's just looking terrible. So he goes there, waterless wash, gets this car, you know, big full size SUV, immaculate, like flawless. And then on the, just between the, the driver and the passenger right here on, on the, on the armrest, there's this little thing that says, your referral is my oxygen. I sincerely appreciate you handing my card to anyone that you think would appreciate my services. And there's two of his business cards sitting next to it. And then in a small envelope in the drink holder, I think there were three or four pieces of juicy fruit gum <laughs> yeah and that i was like so cool that is cool like we sh we send products out we put little mints in there you know those little those little like italian restaurant mints that i love that's the kind of thing johnny has said hey i want to master the skills of business that's not detailing that's business that's understanding what's going to make a customer go all right yeah. guess what i'm not looking for right now i'm not looking for a detailer i got my guy who's in my backyard yeah. who, who will detail for us 
you know, a lot of our customers are weekend warriors or aspiring <clears throat> professional detailers. But what would be like some piece of advice that you would give somebody? What I think is my number one advice is, do you find therapy in the garage or in the driveway? If you enjoy it, then this is for you. If I can come out to this barn or right here in this little driveway and I can clean a car for like two hours or detail something for five or six hours, no, 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 no. I'm in the zone. I'm so happy. Since there is so much media and content that you can consume about detailing, um, I think it's important that, like you were saying, that you actually try those things. Um, not only watch them, but go try them. And if it doesn't work, keep trying it or look at, find another video and just kind of go through that process of trial and error. Don't, Don't be scared, scared of making those mistakes. Yeah, yeah. What do you think, Kerwin? You know, it's got to be a combination of all of that. You know, like you got to enjoy what you're doing. Um, like totally enjoy it and leave yourself with an open mind, you know? I mean, you gotta be able to be on that car and put all your effort and be focused and be like, you gotta love it. That's the only way it's gonna work. And, and if, if not, the videos, the followers, the likes, they, that goes away. You know, it's just, you gotta, you gotta love it. You gotta truly love it and enjoy it. Yeah. So my perspective is more from photography because that's where I get my therapy. But I, I, I kind of like the struggle of trying to get to a certain point. You know, with photography, there's a lot of different techniques. You can light paint cars, you can use strobes, but getting it to a point of where I want, I, I kind of like that struggle. I just love like helping people realize the value that they can bring to their car or themselves or anything, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, Kern, what's something like, like Adam mentioned, clay, ceramic coatings, what's something, a product or process or something that you you can see is, could be changing the industry or, something like that there's a lot i mean you know um paint protection films are changing they're eliminating swirl marks and scratches um they're they're they have hydrophobic uh layers on them polishers and machines and compounds are changing drastically uh faster more efficient easier for people what about you adam with new technology in the industry what do you see you know less is more i think that it's going to be critical for us to, to come up with less and less and less, fewer and fewer products. Uh, one product to, to accomplish as much as possible instead of having like three or four steps of polishing, you know, get it down to one or two steps of polishing. I think the other thing that's changing is that um, in a lot of ways people are loving their cars and then in the other way there's also people, a lot of people's cars are becoming appliances. You know, they're not exactly like, oh, I love my car, I love it. The guy who's filming behind that camera right there, Chris, he uses his car. He drives the snot out of it. You know, not everyone loves their cars. They like their cars. They enjoy driving a not filthy car, but they're not exactly, they're appliances. Like you said, it's so much easier to just enjoy the art and the craft of detailing than it is to make products and try to please everyone. If I was to open up Kerwin's back of his Tundra and look at all the products that he has in there, I would be like, oh my gosh. Well, it's one of the things that makes you so valuable, Kerwin, and when, we're, when we have you testing products with us, is like, Kerwin has every single premium product available, period. That's part of the part of being cool. It's just cool. Like, it's fun. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, don't, I don't need all of them, <laughs> but I like having them all. It's just cool. Like, this is to use this because I want to use it because I never used it in a month, and it's cool. Yeah. And that's the fun about it. And that's cool that you, in, in having that much experience with that many different products and SKUs makes your knowledge base really, really deep. You know, you really know a lot about a lot of different products. You know, your, your 20 or 30,000 or 50,000 hours that you've got logged in now in detailing is, is so killer because you've got so much depth to your product knowledge. Johnny, what, starting out with detailing here, how many years in, three years? What are some, uh, you know, struggles that you see trying to expand your business and, and grow? What, what are some struggles you find? One of the things you're talking about products is and general expenses for how much it costs to do a car. And I remember when I started out, I, I added up the, I like calculated how many ounces of each product I was using and then divided by the pro like did the calculations and figured out that every car I was doing was like $7.33 or something like that. Because I wanted to know that number. And going along with that, it's, it's, it can be tough to know how much you're worth to a customer, how much the detail is worth, and what's gonna pay you, I guess. Um, and as I'm 
getting more clients. I'm trying to adjust prices in a way that isn't only profitable to me, but somebody has no problem forking over whatever it may be. Because at the end of the day, I want it to be a transaction that we both feel really good about. Because yeah. I feel like I provided that value for them and they feel like they got way more value out of it than they paid for. Um, so that's kind of something that I've been focusing more on as I'm trying to expand. And how does a digital world like affect the way you promote your business? Or yeah, so actually, you know this, recently I just bought a new camera to film um, the cars I'm doing and take better before and afters because at the end of the day, that's how people are gonna find out about you if it's not through a friend. So I think it, it, the, the digital age, it is important to produce content, but at the same time, not forget about the people that are already kind of in your customer base. Yeah. Well, it's like your social media accounts, kind of like your resume. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You could send it to whoever yeah. you want, and they can see firsthand like what your work looks like, you know? You know, besides just the work that you put on there, a little bit of lifestyle and who you are. You know, I've been told by people like, dude, like you put too much other stuff on your Instagram like your fishing and your yeah, guns and your biking. Yeah. And it's like, I don't care yeah. because the people who really like me, we talk for hours about fishing, you know? And it's cool because you're just not the detailer. It's like, yeah. dude, he's like a real person. Well, you told me when I got hired, I, I want to be the same person in this video that I am when I'm at an event. It feels like you're not really selling the product. You don't have to because you're passionate about it and, and you're just being transparent. I appreciate you guys talking about the business and. And I just, I respect all of you guys, you know, being a young detailer and immersing yourself in everything and your experience and, you know, where you've taken out his policy. He called us, he called us old, Kermit. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, I really appreciate you guys and thank you very much for sitting down and talking. It's been cool. Thanks, yeah, John. Thank you. Definitely. Thanks, thank you. Thanks, Kerwin. Thanks, Johnny. Thank you. And you know what? Let's make sure that we mention, what's your hashtag on uh, Instagram? Um, it's at Johnny's Mobile Detail, all one word. What's you, Kerwin? I don't know, something Aloha, de <laughs> Aloha Detailing, I don't know. Kerwin, Kerwin or Aloha Detailing? On MySpace. Yeah. On <laughs> MySpace. <laughs> with, the, with the fancy background. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> AOL.com. <laughs> and what's yours? Uh, mine's uh, I don't, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you know what? Now remember, I am old, so I'm allowed to have no, I don't have one. Sorry, I don't do social media. <laughs> At Adam's Polishes. Yeah. It's like Autopia uh, detailing forums. Something. If it's like still run at this point. Adamsforums.com. <laughs>